Hey guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, if you guys, this is another video game review. Now, this is technically an older game, I believe 2016, something like that. Um, so it's not, you know, a new, new, new game is in quotation marks, new, new. But today we're tackling Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Now, this is a uh, sort of sequel, essentially a complete reboot of the Mirror's Edge franchise. Mirror's Edge 1 came out a long time ago, I think like 2006 or 7, something like that. Uh, now, I have not played that one. Mirror's Edge Catalyst, the, again, like I said, sequel reboot thing, that's the one we're reviewing. So, uh, you know, if you've uh, seen my uh, Hanging On tribute, which, uh, if you haven't, go check that out. Essentially, I put different video game, uh, you know, clips from, like, Shadow of Mordor, Assassin's Creed Unity, and, of course, this, uh, into, you know, a tribute, and that's the gameplay I use. Now, uh, so just so that you're aware, you know, I have covered this game before at least once or twice on the channel. Uh, I got it for about $4 at the exchange. I'm not even kidding. It was literally $4. And, uh, you know, I was, I was doing some research, and people were like, oh, is this game any good? And, you know, is it, is it worth your time? And Because, uh, you know, I love Dying Light. I love Dying Light 2, you know, open world parkour zombie games where you're doing, you know, well, parkour, you know, you're jumping from building to building, you're kicking guys, and you're, you know, drop kicking guys, you're doing all this kind of crazy shite, and it's like, man, this is insane, you know, and uh, I kind of wanted more of that, you know, I wanted more of a parkour experience that wasn't just filled with zombies, and I got that with Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Now, there are some negatives of the game. Okay, I have to mention that. Uh, look, but again, for $4, it's an easy, easy 10 out of 10. All right, for four bucks. All right, come on. But if I'm legitimately reviewing it, like I said, I got some negatives. And one of the first is the story. Uh, I think the first Mirror's Edge tried to do a story. It didn't really work. They tried to do a you know a different one with this, I guess, quote-unquote reboot of a, of a game. And it's just, I don't know, man. It, it ain't that interesting. It's just not. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, Faith is an interesting protagonist, I, I guess. You know, I mean, the fact that it's in this giant, you know, city called Glass, and everyone's got these edgy effing hairstyles, looks kind of weird. Uh, you know, I don't know. Look, maybe they're trying to prove a point, trying to be, oh, look, we're edgy. <laughs> Our city's called Glass. <laughs> but who knows? Um, so it goes from there, right? And it's like, okay, you know, Faith is a runner. Essentially, a runner is, you know, a person that goes from uh, place to place in this, you know, giant city. Uh, she's essentially a courier. It's like a, it's like a courier pigeon from Harry Potter, you know? Except instead of smacking your head on the window, you actually, hopefully, don't fall to your death, which I have done numerous times. You're probably going to see that once or twice in the gameplay you're seeing. But, uh, you know, look, the story, it, it's it's kind of all over the place. You know, she's a runner, Kruger sec or Kruger tech or whatever, Kruger something. There, it, It's some bad guy, and I'm not going to spoil it, but it ends on a really weird note, um, and of course we're not getting a sequel, I don't think, you know, it didn't really do that well, so who knows, I'd like a sequel, um, but I'm going to be dead effing honest, alright, I'm going to be dead serious with you guys, when I play games, specifically open world games, I normally watch the cutscenes, you know, like I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy right now, I watch all the cutscenes in Hogwarts Legacy, because it's a you know, it's not the greatest story of all time, but for what it is, it's a pretty gripping narrative. This is not. So half the time I ended up skipping the friggin' cutscene, and I still understood what was going on toward the end. You know, I wasn't that lost. But uh, again, it's just not endearing. It's not that interesting. The, the graphics and the cutscenes are okay. You know, for, for the year it came out, at least it holds up pretty well in 2023. But, uh, you know, the overall narrative they're trying to, you know, say isn't necessarily the best. And I ended up skipping half the stuff. I did it. You know, I finished the campaign. It just wasn't... You know, wasn't it wasn't the most uh, you know gripping in terms of its story, but that's really where the negatives kind of end because the positives they're insane. I mean, the graphics th they were pretty good, and I, I did fiddle with the uh, options and I changed the FOV uh, for you guys who don't know FOV. Uh, you should know if you're a gamer, but uh, FOV is field of view. So that is essentially like uh, the, the game is kind of like a default all the way to the left side of the, the menu, you know, uh, and I don't know, say 100, for an example, 150 FOV. Uh, and then, OK, you know, you could see maybe uh, not as much as the of the environment and you see a lot of faith, uh, you know, mainly, uh, you know, when faith is running, you don't necessarily see her hands too much. It's kind of like a, a very zoomed in focus. Uh, and then I put it all the way to the right at, say, zero uh, FOV. And the, the game was much wider. And when when faith runs, you you actually see her hands. Sometimes it looks a little bit wonky if she's like, you know, freaking reaching for a vent. You hear her arms kind of wail around like a noodle. Um, but you know, I don't know. Maybe she was born like that. But uh, in terms, I'm kidding. In terms of the actual game, you 
know, it does kind of hinder the performance uh, a bit. The, the graphics took a bit of a hit, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a hit when I when I did that. But uh, I personally enjoy the the lower FOV because it gives the sense that you're basically running around this giant city with a GoPro strapped to your forehead, and it's cooler that way. You know, like it's funny because when I played Mirror, Mirror's Edge Catalyst uh, in, in Dying Light Two, you can alter the FOV. Dying Light One, you cannot, at least on console. So it it, do, it looks a little wonky. You know, it's funny kind of playing a different FOV. You know, to a different game, it kind of alters that a bit. But uh, other than that, you know, the graphics, like I said, once you do change the FOV, it did look a bit muddled. But, it, you know, look, I'm not the biggest graphics guy in the world. If it looks decent, it's fine. You know what I mean? If it runs good, it's fine. And I believe the game is running at 60 FPS uh, on my Xbox Series X. At least it does feel like that. So that's cool. Uh, it's always good, you know, because you kind of need that, uh, you know, good FPS. You know, the last thing you want is running around this giant open world doing parkour and it's lagging and it's running like a, you know... Uh, like a not so good game. Uh, I don't know. I guess Saints Row 2022. I guess that's an example of a, of a not so good running game. But uh, or Elden Ring. I guess with the stuttering. But thankfully, this game doesn't have any of that. It's just a smooth experience. So yeah, the story's not the best. Okay, graphics. Once you change the FOV, and it is what it is. But when it comes to the actual gameplay, it's a friggin' top tier game. Let me tell you. I mean, uh, it is a bit wonky playing Dying Light 2 for so long and then playing this because Dying Light 2, the jump button is RB on an Xbox controller, but in Mirror's Edge Catalyst, it's it's LB, so it, it's a bit wonky. It's like everything's kind of reversed. Um, but, you know, it ain't that big of a deal. But it, it's really fun to actually go and play this game. I mean, it looks fun when you watch YouTube clips, you know, of, like, parkour runs and all that crap. You know, it looks really good. But when you're actually playing it and you know how to play it, it it's like bread and butter, man. It's it's awesome. Um, I mean, just running around the city using a grappling hook or wall running or doing the slide or, you know, power sliding and then hitting RT and, like, Faith getting maximum, uh, you know, um, momentum. It's cool, you know. And I was a little... Um, a little put off because I was doing some research and I, you know, when I play an open world game, uh, for the most part, I want an open world game to have replay value. You know, the last thing you want is a game like Far Cry where you beat the Far Cry game and you're like, wow, Far Cry 5, that was great. Good story. Good open world. That was awesome, man. I, I did everything. Now what? And they're like, you have all these cool, awesome guns. You got an AK-47. You got an MP5. You got a 1911. And there's no enemies. So you're running around the forest like a friggin' idiot shooting a pig or something, you know, because you're, 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 you're totally bored. And I know there's outposts and all that, but I'm talking about the legitimate open world. If an open world game isn't fun to play after beating it, then it's not necessarily a good open world game. And I looked into it, and Mirror's Edge Catalyst, uh, you know, I was like, okay, is there, you know, are there enemies in the world? Or is it just running around in empty city? Because, you know, when you're watching this gameplay here, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, the city of glass, it's not necessarily the, the most lively game in the world. You know, you'll, you'll look down and you'll see cars on the streets or whatever, but, you know, there aren't a billion runners like you running around the city doing parkour, you know. It's not the most lived-in open world. It's it's very much, I, I, I kind of like liken it to, uh, it's kind of akin to like a parkour simulator. And I know, obvi uh, duh, you know, <laughs> but... You know, like, running simulators, all you do is run, you know. This game, not all you do, not all you do is run. We're going to go with it. We're going to run with it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's late when I'm recording this, so it's fine. I can get my grammar wrong. Um, you know, not all you do is run in the city. So, you know, there's other stuff, but I was worried that it would just become a, like I said, running simulator where you're just, you know, running around the city like an idiot all the time, nothing to do but run. Uh, and that would have been fine for four bucks. But after I went to a certain part in the story, there's, like, security cameras, and once they scan you, K-Sec or Kruger-Sec, uh, these, these, you know, cronies that you're, you've probably seen already in this video, or you will see these uh, blue henchman-looking guys with nightsticks and uh, glitter guns, I guess, uh, they kind of, you know, they shoot at you and they try to beat you up, and that leads to the combat. Thankfully, there are enemies in the game that constantly respawn, which is friggin' awesome. Because not only can you run around endlessly in the game, you can redo every single side quest, you know, the time trials, the courier missions, you can do all of that. You can also redo any main mission from the campaign anytime you want and get collectibles or just enjoy them all over again. So the replay value, and again, enemies do respawn. So the replay value in this game, through the friggin' roof. It's insane. For $4, it's like the ultimate steal, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Uh, but that leads into the combat. You know, there is a skill tree, of course, like like many games nowadays that try to, uh, you know, shove a skill tree down my throat. And it, sometimes it's good, sometimes I end up choking on it, metaphorically. And uh, in this in this case, uh, it, it wasn't the best, you know, because look, 
Every time you level up, you know, you get a skill point, right, obviously. But the problem is, is that once you finish, at least for me, once I finished the campaign, I got all the skills, I maxed out my skill tree. So I have all these side quests, all these collectibles, all these whatever, the billboards, and I'm doing it. And I'm like, that's ah, fun, but I'm not getting any XP. So I'm not leveling up my character because I already did that. So I think that's a little unbalanced. Um, so, you know, just just keep that in mind. But in terms of the combat, there are some combat skills, you know, like like um, sliding and kicking or, you know, better mo momentum or, you know, stuff like that. Um, nothing too insane, but, you know, it is it is kind of cool, I guess. Um, but the combat, again, once you get that FOV, like I said, not only does parkour feel like you got a, a, a GoPro strapped to your forehead. Again, look, if you've seen the movie Hardcore Henry... Or watch a trailer, or whatever. It's it's like that. Although you know, Hardcore Henry, a lot of people got motion sick because um, it's a first person film. I didn't, maybe because I play a lot of Call of Duty or something. I don't know. But uh, it, uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst kind of reminds me of that film, uh, and so does the combat. You know, when you're kicking dudes in the chest or you're you know doing these awesome badass combos and you're punching them in the neck or you know the, their uh, their helmets are shattering or um, you know you're side swiping to the left and doing a roundhouse kick, it looks good. In first person. Yeah, like I said, Faith's arms look a little bit noodle-like sometimes, but um, I guess that's you know, just because the FOV is not really a negative. But uh, the combat's really fun. I know a lot of people hate it. It is simplistic. All you're really friggin' doing is just tapping the right... Uh, right, you know, right trigger RT and moving to basically violently hurl yourself in a given direction, uh, like an alien. She just like, like literally violently like dodges to the left and right. I'm just shocked she doesn't fall over. Um, and then from there, all you're doing is hitting the X button to punch, Y button to kick. Nothing that crazy. Um, it's nothing too uh, difficult. You know, this is not Elden Ring or, or Borderlands um, difficulty, but, uh, you know, you can change the difficulty, of course, um, but it's fun, you know, the combat's very fun, I think it's a very fun game, so overall, man, the story, again, it's, it's, it's skippable, um, don't let it deter you from buying it, again, if you really want to, like what I did, skip the cutscenes, if you're a trooper, man, just and watch him, but at the same time, I don't, I don't know, because it's, for me, at least, it didn't click, um, of course, I watched the ending cutscenes, so I, I knew what was going on, but, uh, again, uh, half the stuff in the, in the, in the middle and all that, just filler, pretty poor dialogue, the acting's all right. I think Dogen, one of the main characters, is pretty good. Faith is good. So the voice acting's generally good. Uh, the writing and, and stuff is, is not the best in, in the story, at least. And again, the skill tree can have a bit of wonkiness. Again, once you finish the campaign, there's not a whole lot to do there. But uh, just the open world city of glass, the parkour, the awesome animations, the changing of the FOV, the fact you can replay side missions and main missions, the fact that enemies are always around in the world, so it's not just an empty, boring city of running around. For four bucks, this sounds like the best friggin' game of all time, and it kind of is for four bucks. Uh, again, it's not my favorite game of all time, but it is a very good game. And again, I would recommend, obviously, for anything under ten. But if you if you see this game for fifteen twenty, I'd still recommend picking it up, man. If, if you love uh, first person games, if you love open world games, if you like parkour, you know you can really just you know put on a, put on your favorite band, uh, and you know just run around the city and do some sick parkour moves. I mean, you know that's really what I do. I think it's kind of cool. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna give Mirrors edge catalyst with all this being said i'm going to give it an eight out of ten um it is a very solid experience for the camp or sorry <laughs> for the gameplay and for the uh you know combat and the fact that you can re the replay value is so um you know sneaking high uh but again that story and some of the skill tree stuff is a bit wonky um just keep that in mind but overall man eight out of ten great game i'm going to be covering this game more on the channel probably doing some gameplay or just you know putting gameplay to random topics it's a really good game to just record and just watch you know what i mean so hope you enjoyed the gameplay uh, in the in the review. If you have played Mirror's Edge Catalyst, tell me in the comments down below what you think. If you played the first one, Mirror's Edge 1, tell me in the comments uh, if I should get it. You know, maybe it's cheap. Who knows? I uh, Next time I go to the exchange, I'll have to see if it's there. Um, it's a short game, about five-hour campaign. Uh, and again, once you, uh, you know, finish and skill tree, you know, max out your skill tree, uh, there's not a whole lot to do uh, in terms of, like, initiative because, again, you're not getting XP. I, I'm doing, I do everything, you know, I do the main missions and the side missions and all that just because they're fun, but, uh, if you're, if you you know, you're really a, a hardcore RPG guy, uh, or girl or whatever, you know, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't go into this thinking it's Assassin's Creed Valhalla or Elden Ring, because uh, it is not. But uh, it's a fun open world game with really cool parkour, and it's just a blast to play. Again, tell me in the comments what you think. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Like the video if you enjoyed. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.